because there's plenty of zeros coming to a theater near you until we actually force regulation on this. So in today's video, let's discuss the three main things that affect Bitcoin. Number one, the CPI data for February, what this means to you. Number two, Sam Bankman Fried has been forced to reveal the names of his bond signers. We now have them. And of course, the biggest news, Kevin O'Leary went on Yahoo Finance this morning to talk about the timeline of actual crypto regulation in the US. Kevin, you're the one invited to these hearings. You're the one on the phone with these regulators. What is the timeline and what sort of regulation should we expect? So l let me give you the um, what's changed over the last few months on the Hill. What's different now is, and I spoke to the senators at the FTX hearing after we'd finished them, and you know, there was a chance to just get a, a feel of the tone of Washington. There's a fatigue coming into their thinking. They're tired of having hearings every six months when the next crypto company blows up and goes to zero. Does that mean we just get rushed to resolution? Though? I think that's what's going to happen. The heavy hand, and Gensler gave you that tonality last week on staking. He made it damn clear that he doesn't like it. And he, on the Kraken deal, he said, we just shut it down. Now, if you don't hear, read the room, everybody. Just look what I did. I shut down staking. Now, that takes the value of cryptocurrencies down a lot if they can't be staked. So this is the kind of environment we're in. The industry was unable to self-regulate itself. And, you know, let's, let's be honest. The, every human heart has greed in it. And we are given the opportunity to issue worthless tokens with no guardrails. And, you know, the BNB and the FTT tokens, those are worthless. And, of course, these exchanges are going to go to zero because at some point somebody calls the cash transaction back to USD. So right now, take for example, BNB is 64 billion of market cap. The only reason to own that token on Binance is to get a discount on trading fees. What's the intrinsic value of that token? Nothing. It doesn't give you access to the equity of the company. Now, if you go look at the wallets, there's only two wallets that have 97% of all of those tokens. I wonder who owns those. What happens if one of them says, I want cash? Does, does Binance have 34 billion USD of cash? I don't think so. So my whole point is, these things will keep blowing up over and over and over again. And finally, the senators are saying on these committees, we're done. Let's put the heavy hand of regulation down. And that's probably a good thing long term. So if you hold cryptocurrency, let me share with you what's wrong and what's right with Kevin's opinion, in my opinion. First off, I tend to agree that for better or for worse, we're getting rushed regulation for crypto in the US because of everything that's happened in the last few years. Gary Gensler, one of the regulators closest with Sam Bankman-Fried, has been embarrassed. We saw how we just shut down Kraken's staking as a service, meaning no nuance, no middle ground, simply the regulation is that you're done. It's not allowed. Of course, in Gary Gensler's eyes, this is protecting consumers while in reality, the innovation for crypto is just pushed overseas. So again, in that aspect, I agree. Regulation is being rushed. Be ready. Number two, very quickly, Kevin O'Leary stated that BNB is going to zero, in his opinion, because there's no real utility for the token other than discount and trading fees for the exchange. I would say, in a sense, there used to be some truth to that. When there was just the exchange, then over the years, we have seen this you know, Binance Smart Chain is like Ethereum in the sense that it's a DApp platform as well. And we're seeing this budding ecosystem of DApps on Binance Smart Chain emerge. So this is the utility. This is the use case. And this has grown substantially over the years. When Kevin says something like that, I think he is just trying to make CZ the ultimate scapegoat as well as deliver 2017 narratives in the year 2023. Nevertheless, Kevin O'Leary is the person asked to be at these hearings. He's the one in the room with these regulators. And we may see the SEC and other regulatory bodies go after Binance because of these questions. Also, Kevin O'Leary goes on to say, why don't we turn back on FTX just to see where the money is? Let's let the public see where we stand. So since we last talked, we know of a $4.2 billion pool that supposedly the Bahamians have, supposedly. We know of a $1.2 billion pool of assets, maybe cash, that FTX US has, supposedly. We know of 400 million of cash cash somewhere. You add that up, there's a lot of shareholders and account holders saying, okay, everybody, let's talk about where this money is and what everybody wants right now and putting the real pressure 
on John Ray is to say, look, turn on the exchange again, gate it so no assets can leave it, so that each account holder can see what they have or had and see the transaction records, which we still don't have yet. And supposedly, again rumored, is it's all backed up on AWS, at Amazon, and can be turned on in a moment's notice, alleged, so to speak. So we don't know, but the litigation is piling on. There's a thousand lawyers who are gonna make a lifetime living off this thing. It'll go on for a decade or more, and you know, let the pieces fall where they may. Now, speaking of litigation, as I stated, Sam Bankman-Fried has been forced to reveal the names of his bond signers. This is coming directly from the judge. And as you may remember, Bankman-Fried had two co-signers in addition to his parents. So his parents put up their house and they signed the bond, but who were the other two? Well, it turns out that it was one, a Stanford research director, and two, the former dean of Stanford. Both put up the money specifically it was Stanford's Andreas, who is the research director and former dean of Stanford, Larry Kramer. Researcher put up 200,000 and former dean put up 500,000. And of course, Sam Bankman-Fried's parents are both Stanford instructors. So that's the connection. So if anybody in the Altcoin Daily audience is enrolled in Stanford right now, let us know down in the comment section, what's the talk around campus? Of course, one of the biggest factors for the Bitcoin price, the crypto market in general, is macro. And as of yesterday, we got the February CPI data. Headline CPI consumer price index came in at 6.4%, higher than what was expected at 6.2. And then core CPI, where they take out food and other things, came in at 5.6%, just above the expected 5.5%. And what does this tell us? it tells us that inflation is stickier than expected. We are not going down as fast as expected. And it should be noted, we are definitely going down. Here's where we are right now. This is headline inflation and core inflation, taking on food and energy. And as you can see, yeah, we're trending down. We are a tick below where we were last month and we're definitely down from the highs of mid last year. Now the goal is two. We're still at 6.4 and 5.6. So despite the eight consecutive interest rate hikes from the Fed we've seen in the last eight meetings, again, inflation is going down, but it is a lot stickier than what we were expecting, as well as uh, we're still pretty far from the 2% goal by year's end. To me, this says to me that I don't see us getting to 2% like Jerome Powell has been stating by the end of the year, maybe 3 or 4% by the end of this year and 2% into next year. And because of this sticky inflation, markets are now predicting that we do get more than just another 25 basis point rate hike than hold. Markets now think three more 25 basis point rate hikes to a terminal rate of 5.5% by June will happen, followed by holding there until December, at which point the market thinks the Fed will cut by 25. So last meeting, they said just one more, Based on this data, the market now thinks three more than a hold for the rest of the year. Of course, this is an ongoing story. We will get one more CPI data report before the Fed's next meeting. Every day we get new data, I will make a video. I will keep you updated. We're going to be talking again together about the next thing that went to zero, because there's plenty of zeros coming to a theater near you until we actually force regulation on this, because who wouldn't make a worthless token? I mean. Think about it, Why, wh what do you need a token for that's supposedly ownership in the exchange? You're not allowed to do that in a bank, you're not allowed to do that in New York Stock Exchange. If you wanna buy a piece of New York Stock Exchange, buy the equity of the exchange. The same thing should be for any exchange anywhere. 